Hello, and welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. This is the show that will analyze, discuss, and reflect on local history. Uh, today we have with us, just to do that, um, two wonderful segments. In our first segment, we'll meet with uh, Jacksonville Historical Society board members and the president of the Jacksonville Historical Society and discuss what does the Jacksonville Historical Society do. And then in our second segment, we'll focus on one of the most riveting parts of our city's history, the Fort Caroline experience. First, let's get started with some of our local history and what the Jacksonville Historical Society does. And to, to discuss that, I have with me the president of the Jacksonville Historical Society, Harry Reagan. Welcome, Harry. Thank you. And I have with me Jerry Spinks, also a board member of the Historical Society, former chairman of the Historic Preservation Commission for the city of Jacksonville, and now pressed into the service and so admirably as chairman of the Jacksonville Historical Society's Merrill House Restoration Project. And uh, that's all a big introduction, but you have a big job. And I wanted to start, before I get to you, Jerry, and the Merrill House Restoration, I'd really like to start with Harry. Because a lot of people really does, don't know what the Jacksonville Historical Society does. And, and let's start with you. Well, we do almost anything we can think of to preserve history and uh, increase the interest in history uh, of Jacksonville and Northeast Florida. We'll see some examples. We'll try to sell a few things probably tonight. <laughs> Please. Uh, we've got books to sell and plates to sell and so forth. And, of course, now we're doing a cable show. We have a website, www.jackshistory.com with all kinds of information and links to other websites. So uh, almost anything that you can think of, uh, you do tours constantly right. uh, of City Hall and the downtown area. We try to preserve significant buildings. We've won some fights for saving buildings and lost some. And uh, so that's what we're interested in. We invite people to become members of the Historical Society and to come to our programs. And, and I do thank you, and I do think people uh, know us best recently by one of our recent publications because we're in the publishing business. Uh, they like to say local historical societies publish what other people won't. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're not really money makers typically, but these can be wonderful publications. And that's certainly true in the case with the Jacksonville Historical Society. Uh, Jerry, I'm going to ask you to reach over there and maybe just hold up, and let's see if the camera can focus on that, the uh, Great Fire of 1901 which was a publication put out about this time last year. And a lot of people say that is the single most important event in Jacksonville history. And, and, and I think that that is probably not debatable, but today on the show uh, later on in segment two, we'll hear about some early North Florida history that uh, certainly is right up there with the Jacksonville Fire. Well, that, that book is in its second printing, and written by Wayne Wood and by the late Bill Foley, and it's a fantastic book. Uh, it's no wonder that it's in its second printing. We'll just uh, suggest that it would be a great Christmas gift if you don't already own a copy. It, it certainly is, and they can find out how to get it by www.jackshistory.com or s simply by calling the Jacksonville Historical Society listed in the phone book. Um, I, I'd like to just point out while we're talking about this, certainly the Jacksonville Historical Society has uh, other projects. You talked about our tours. You talked about, we've talked about our publications. Uh, we do have programs, and that can all be found on our website as well. Well, there's another book, maybe we, while we're talking about books. Okay, okay, uh, let me hold Bill this Bill Jeter, up. a local attorney, uh, has a great collection of postcards, and it's in this book, which is another great uh, gift recommendation. And uh, so we, we don't publish a lot of books, but we try to publish books that are interesting and worthwhile, and uh, this is certainly another example. And I, I think now is a good time to turn to, to what people probably recognize us the most for now. And this is in the middle of all that's going on in the city right now, which is the sports complex building projects, part of the Better Jacksonville plan, are just huge now. And the Jacksonville Historical Society sits squarely in the middle of that. And if we could perhaps go to that uh, picture we have of the of the Historical Society's church. These are our headquarters. Harry, you want to talk a little bit about this and the plan right well, now? Well, the Better Jacksonville plan includes a new baseball uh, park and a, an arena replacing the Coliseum and Wolfson Park. And behind us, behind Old St. Andrews, the church there in front, is the ballpark and across the street is the arena. So we are right in the middle and for about a year it's going to be difficult. 
particularly for people like Emily who have to go to work there every day. Yeah, it's tough. And, uh, <laughs> and on the left, of course, is a project that Jerry needs to talk about, which is the Merrill House. And it is uh, proceeding amazingly, thanks to Jerry, who is the mm -hmm. primary person responsible for overseeing that. And, and this is exciting to, to see. Everybody knows old St. Andrews in the heart of this sports entertainment complex. Well, and Jerry, let's turn to you because the little house that you saw in the distance in that photo, uh, or right across the street from old St. Andrews, is the Merrill House, the James E. Merrill House. Uh, tell us a little bit about that project, if you will, when it started uh, as chairman of this. Well, it started in 1879 when James E. Merrill uh, decided to build a Victorian house in what was then the very upscale neighborhood of East Jacksonville. And at the corner of Monroe and Lafayette, he assembled the workers from the Merrill Stevens shipyard, a quite endless supply of heart pine and Victorian bric-a-brac, and built a story and a half house. And this will be the house that Jacksonville Historical Society will showcase next to St. Andrews. Um, why don't we just show that house right now? I believe this will be in its uh, not so good shape. Yeah, here you go, Jerry. Mm -hmm. This is how you found it. And this is how the Historical Society uh, found it when they decided to put it back together. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, this no. photograph uh, obviously occurred a great deal after 1879. It had been moved from Monroe and Lafayette Street to a location just south of the church. And here in these photos, you see it as we were beginning to stabilize it prior to making all the measurements and doing organizing ourselves to have it completed. And then along came the Better Jacksonville plan and, <laughs> and yes. moved the house. Right? Now, 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 here's a modern shot. In well, more, much more recent shot taken from the back porch, upper floor of the back porch through the Victoria bric-a-brac that you see toward Altel Stadium and the Coliseum. That stands for now. The Coliseum will be coming down, I guess, right. in about a year mm -hmm. yes, it or will. less. And, and this, is, this is some of the restoration work. This is how it looks today. It does. The uh, shot was taken several days ago. And you'll, at this point, as compared to the first shot, you'll notice that the outside of the building is complete. It has been rebuilt. Uh, in the early 80s, a oak tree grew through the roof, and nobody stopped it. So it, <laughs> even heart pine will rot after 20 years worth of water. But that photograph indicates a completed and sealed building. So it's taken the Historical Society about two years to get to this point with this old Victorian house. But it will, like old St. Andrews, be the centerpiece of Very the so. sports complex area. And we're very excited about that. It, it really turns the Historical Society and the telling of history in, in, an, in a new direction for uh, the citizens. Um, talk a little bit about the Merrill House project, will you? Uh, what you see for the future of it? How, how much more time will it take? Will The big question that everybody asks, that I never thought I, as a quasi-armchair historian, would ask, will it be ready in time for the Super Bowl? Oh, of course <laughs> it'll be ready. Uh, Really, Did you say, say that again? <laughs> I said, of course it'll be ready. The exterior of the house, it's landscaping, as is in the case of the landscaping with the church and around the corner of Duval and A. Philip Randolph, will be ready in March when that baseball sta stadium opens. The uh, stadium is well underway. Our corner will be pivotal in the sense that uh, it, it, there is a large brick walk that will now run from Hogan Street clear to Altel Stadium down what was once Duval Street. And that is between both the Merrill House and the church. And it will be in fine shape by then. And the lights will be on. Well, that's exciting news. I, I know the city has asked us to reserve these two facilities for that week. And, uh, and I told them with my blessing and I'll be uh, it, it curled up in my little home 10 miles away. I, and, you know, while last football season the Merrill House was not in very great shape and some of the city fathers were saying, uh, can't you get that uh, project going? This football season, which is upon us now, uh, the house looks much better. Yes, it does. Nothing to be ashamed of at all and people can see what it's going to become. And in fact, we have some pictures of really what we're going to do is put it back like it originally was. And we have some pictures of that. And if we could take a look at a couple of those pictures, uh, 
This is, this is what Jerry's going to do for us uh, with the Merrill House and yes. Harry Reagan, who has been there every step of the way. Well, as you compare this photograph with the other, keep in mind several things. You will see shutters on windows. You will see details on a porch on the front, including the steps both on the front and the south side. And you see window sashes. You see a general color. The original color of the house is white. The roof is a brick red raised tin metal, metal roof. And I do think we may have another picture or two of the Merrill House, and, and we'll, we'll go ahead and look at that now. Okay. Can I walk you through? Oh, goodness. This is that earlier. Yes. Now, one of the things that will be on the, on the use of the house is that it will, in the tours of the house, we will demonstrate the means by which it was constructed, which was balloon framing. And we have marks inside the house that will il illustrate where the original house that you see here began and where the extension that was made some eight or nine years later is also there. So, so this so that was construction. Yes. Yeah, so just so the viewers know, that was a house that originally built as the Merrill home. And just a few years after that was built in roughly 1879, the Merrills dramatically uh, uh, expanded their right, home to that Victorian mansion. Now, Jerry, tell us about this picture of the Merrill family, if you will. Well, if anyone were to really focus on the house and why we're doing it, the restoration really is the story of the people on the porch. The lady in the back, sitting in the rocker, was one of Mr. Merrill's aunts. You have to remember that that lady experienced the war between the states personally. The gentleman, Mr. Merrill, sitting foremost in the picture, James E. Merrill, knew these people and knew of what they had done during the war. The Merrill Stevens shipyard was involved in building uh, ships for that war. From the Civil War experience of the lady in the background, Mr. Merrill built ships for World War II. So we have, a, in the restoration, it's more than nails, it's about the people, where they lived, and the house they built. So the, pe the people associated with the house are certainly equally, if, are, do, are perhaps surpassed the, the, the house itself. And the Stevens, in that partnership, uh, his home has been restored. In, it's in Springfield and is on uh, countless home tours. So uh, the, both homes, uh, both partners in that shipyard, uh, their homes will have been restored. I want to thank you both for being with me today. Uh, this has been just a pleasure, and I want to remind all of our listeners to find out more about what we've talked about and the programs of the Jacksonville Historical Society. Just check with www.jackshistory.com. Thank you both so much. We'll take a break now.